Then we get the emails. What's the next shoe to drop? Um, and again, uh, you know, we saw John Podesta leave the, uh, leave the White House, according to the Clinton folks, to come into the campaign to be the adult in the room. What does that say about the rest of the people in the room? I mean, she's got to, I mean, she's got to run the campaign. I was around Bill Clinton in 92 with him in, Feb in February 92 in New Hampshire. I was with Barack Obama uh, here and in Virginia in, in 08. I tell you who ran those campaigns, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Who the hell's running this campaign? Yeah, that's a good question, and the answer is Hillary Clinton. Don't, don't think that she's gotten bad advice. She knows what she's doing. Joining us now is Ron Christie, CEO of Christie Strategies, former uh, uh, advisor to George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, and author of Acting White, Daily Beast columnist as well. Hello, Ron, sir. Good to see you, my friend. Good afternoon. Always good to see you. There's his book out on your, on your TV screen. Okay, you know, you, you wrote a great piece at the Daily Beast. You talk about uh, your experiences when you left the White House, how the lawyers told you everything you had to do. Why are you, why were you held to one standard and Hillary Clinton lives by another standard? It's unbelievable, isn't it, Steve? And in fact, let's start on the first day that I was at the White House. The first day when you come to the White House and you sit down at your computer, there's a band that's put across your computer terminal by the Government Accountability Office that says all of the property, all of the documents remain the property of the United States government. And then you fast forward four years later to when I left, and I had some really neat memos that I'd written President Bush. I had some memos that I'd written to the senior staff, and someone from the counsel's office said, Ron, all of your electronic files have to remain with us. All of your physical documents and files have to remain with us because they have to be properly archived. It would seem to me that a special assistant to the President of the United States is far more down the, the pecking order in the food chain than the Secretary of State, who's the most senior member of the President's cabinet. Absolutely. And now, now we find out that, um, you know, you got the former ambassador to Kenya who uh, during Clinton's tenure as State uh, head of the State Department uh, had to resign in part over what he did with his emails. Uh, we find out that uh, she had multiple emails on this private server, and she still hasn't said anything. She, days and days and days, she sent her sycophants out to say, uh, uh, the, the former governor of Michigan, Granholt, said, oh, well, she was just following precedent. And Lawrence O'Donnell said, wait a minute, she can't follow precedent, the law changed. And, and she doubled down saying, well, she just did what all the other secretaries of state did. And he said, you don't get it, do you? Well, for one, Steve, that's just not true. I mean, if you look at the most transparent administration in history, uh, the Barack Obama administration actually changed the rules during uh, Secretary Clinton's tenure in office that mandated that all the records had to be kept. So for those saying, well, Colin Powell this or Condi Rice that, it doesn't matter because President Obama was the one who wanted to make sure that all the documents could be archived. Another important point to keep in mind here, I think, Steve, is this one. It is not the judgment of Secretary Clinton and her staff to determine which emails are archived and which ones aren't. When I turned on my computer every day, out my personal emails, all my professional emails, they were properly documented and archived because they're the property of the American people. She doesn't get to, to sit and choose out of 55,000 pages of documents that she claims she's turned everything over. We need full disclosure, we need full accountability, but with the Clintons, it's all going to be parsing, all legalese, and it's going to be more what is is or is isn't. You know, I thought at the beginning, I tweeted out and Facebook posted that uh, the New York Times was doing her a favor by putting this out on the eve of Benjamin Netanyahu's speech. Mm -hmm. It would get buried. But this isn't getting buried. I mean, the AP's uh, follow up the next day with the server in her house. And now the AP might, uh, might sue to get uh, emails uh, related to. And there are lots of questions about uh, uh, Uma Abedin. Uh, the AP wants answers to that. Judicial Watch wants answers to that. Other groups want answers to that. I think this is just going to keep going and going. And she's going to have a heck of a hard time smiling her way through this. Right. I don't really see how she digs her way out of this. It would be one thing if she used a personal email account uh, on a periodic basis and then, of course, sent those documents back to the State Department. You're talking about not only someone who created their own alias and an email address, you're talking about someone who created a server in Chappaqua, New York. We might not ever get down to the bottom of this because she's going to say it's my personal property and you don't have access to it, but oh, I've already complied with everything that, that I should have turned over. This is a big story, Steve, and I think this is one that's going to stick. has a lot of Democrats. I spoke to a, a very, very senior former prominent uh, official in the Clinton White House who is very worried about this saying, if Hillary goes down, Who's our plan B? We yeah, don't have one. Well, that's a, that's a darn good question. But don't worry, the Republicans could screw that up, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> uh, that, is that, we got 10 seconds. Is that Mario, Mariano Rivera behind you there, 42? 
That's it, number 42. Got it at a uh, private auction, and got, he graciously signed it. Got you. Oh, very nice. Ron, great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Jennifer Always Rubin of the Washington Post is next, folks. Do not go away.